So we need to remember that chemical reactions that involve energy changes, they're going to classify it into two types of reactions. They can either be endothermic or exothermic. We will discuss these in a bit. But a couple of things we need to remember about energy. Energy is measured in joules. Let me give it a symbol J. And that one kilojoule is 1,000 joules. And more, than, more times than not, you're going to see energy measured in kilojoules rather than joules. Because the amount of energy produced in joules is so large, it's easier to work with a larger unit of kilojoules than joules. So be mindful of that. Now, endothermic reactions. These reactions absorb energy from their surroundings. So that means our products have more energy than the reactants. And basically, this means our activation energy, the minimum amount of energy required for the reaction to occur. The difference between the energy of our products and the energy of our reactants, that's what we call our delta H, or enthalpy change. So for this reaction, the products have more energy than the reactants, so that means energy was absorbed. So if energy is absorbed, what does that mean? Several things. The container will feel cold. And it also tells us that delta H, that change in enthalpy is positive. And if we were to include heat in the reaction, it's going to be a reactant because it is consumed. It is used up in the reaction. All right. And just to remind you, if it's endothermic, energy is transferred from the surroundings. Exothermic reactions. They release. These are en en rea chemical reactions that release energy to the surroundings. So the products now have less energy than the reactants. So we go from reactants and we go down to products. So delta H is lower, products minus reactants. So we get a negative value because our reactants have more energy than the products. So the container will feel hot. Whatever container or vessel the reaction is occurring in, it will feel hot because energy is being released in the form of heat. And as I said before, delta H, the change in enthalpy will be negative. Heat is a product because it is something that is produced from a chemical reaction. So it will be on the right hand side of the equation. All right, and exothermic reactions, just as a reminder, energy is transferred to the surroundings. So in this example, we're given, well, we ask how many, how much ethane must be combusted to produce 1750 kilojoules of heat. So first of all, we look at our balanced equation. 2 moles of ethane, 7 moles of oxygen to produce 4 moles of carbon dioxide, 6 moles of water, and 345 kilojoules. So we see here, we're given ethane and kilojoules in the question. And in the equation, there is a relationship between the amount of kilojoules produced, the amount of heat produced, and ethane. So we start with what is given to us, 1750 kilojoules. Why is this negative? Because since it is produced, that means it's at delta H, its value is negative. Now I start with my kilojoules and I want to look at how many moles of ethane I need to produce that amount of kilojoules. I look at the relationship in terms of moles of ethane to kilojoules. Two moles of ethane produces 345 kilojoules. I will see since it produces 345, that's negative 345. Negative 1750 divided by negative 345 gives us a positive value. Now that we have moles of ethane, remember it says how much, so we don't stop at moles because we cannot measure moles in the lab. We have to calculate moles based on the mass. So we must go on to calculate the mass. We have 30.08 grams of ethane in one mole. And that will give us 305 grams of ethane required. In this example, we're asked how much heat is emitted when 15.0 grams of aluminum is reacted with excess iron 3 oxide. So here we're told iron 3 oxide is in excess. Look at your balance equation, 2 moles of aluminum, 1 mole of iron 3 oxide, 1 mole of aluminum oxide, 2 moles of iron, and 850 kilojoules of heat produced. Now, it's asking for how much heat is emitted. Since it's emitted or produced, 
then you should you should have an indication it should give you an indication that your value should be negative it's important the value for the amount of heat produced should be negative so we start with our balanced equation we start with what is given to us 15 grams of aluminum go from grams to moles convert the grams of aluminum to moles of aluminum now that we have moles of aluminum we look at our balance equation we want how many kilojoules how many how much heat is produced so that's in kilojoules so we look at the equation what is the relationship between 850 kilojoules and aluminum we realize that we produce 850 kilojoules so that's negative 850 kilojoules for every two moles of aluminum So 15.0 multiplied by negative 850 divided by 26.98 then divided by 2 and that will give us negative 236 kilojoules. So again, we need to remember endothermic reactions, exothermic reactions. Endothermic reactions absorbs energy from the surroundings. The products will have more energy than the reactants. The container will feel cold. Delta H is positive. Heat is a reactant. And the opposite is for exothermic reactions. They release energy to their surroundings. So delta H will be negative. The containers will feel cold. The reactants have more energy than the products. That's all you need to remember here. This takes us to the end of this video. Until the next time, I'm out. Blessings.